Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and yeah, news is kind of picking up. After GDC, there was a huge glut of stuff to talk about, and now, now we've got stuff again. And today, what we are talking about is Construct 3. Specifically, JavaScript coding being added to Construct 3, which is huge in my opinion. This is one of the biggest flaws with Construct 3 game engine, in my humble opinion, at least. So first, we're going to do a very quick overview of what Construct 3 is all about, and then we're going to jump into the new details of this JavaScript programming. So first off, this, what you see in front of you, that is Construct 3. And it's got, you know, a full level editor. You've got properties going on. Uh, you've got the various different entities or a scene graph that make up your, your scene. Uh, you can change out your levels easy enough. You've got a uh, full level editor and placement. You've got tile maps. You've got, and then when it comes down to coding, those are event sheets. But before we move on, I need to reveal one thing to many of you that uh, it's been nice talking to you and I will see you all later. Yep, we are in a browser. So that is one of those things that is polarizing about Construct 3. With Construct 3, they moved to a browser-based solution. I believe there is a standalone client out there, but this is ultimately browser-based um, development. And it's also subscription-based. Now, I don't particularly, like, that doesn't bother me, especially because they've implemented it in a way such as you can lose your connection and still work locally and so on. So it works basically just like a local application anyways. But I know that's a polarizing feature for some people out there. Okay. So anyways, back to what we are talking about now. How do you code in Construct 3? Well, the entire idea behind Construct 3 is it's a lot like um, other systems you've heard out there. Stencil, GDevelop, um, BuildBox that we talked about just yesterday, uh, even kind of Click Team Fusion. They all kind of use a similar no coding approach, which is a bit of a misnomer. You're still coding. You're just coding in a different manner. And the way that you're coding here is basically with nested spreadsheets, these flow charts of code. So you see here, the logic breaks down into different categories. So we've got different things that happen, different logic that goes in here. And then you're responding to events with actions. And that's basically how you can think of it. An event happens such as keyboard, Z key is down. And then we can have some conditionals and we can add actions. And if you've got, okay, I'm getting out of there. So I'm in a free edition right now. If you don't like the actions that are provided or you don't like the events that are provided, you're kind of screwed. At that point in time, you either need to create an add-on of your own, which is kind of a pain in the butt, or you hope that um, Skira, 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 I've never actually said it out loud. You hope that they add the functionality that you ultimately want added, and that's kind of not ideal. So that's where today's big change comes in. So what has been announced on their blog, Skira. All right, I'll get over that. I gotta learn how to pronounce things better. Um, so. First off, they put out that they know that not coding is kind of one of their marquee sales features. And that kind of does make sense. Construct 3 is all about not having to code. Uh, or Construct 2 was, at least. And then um, if you needed those extensions, you waited on or hoped on the community to create those add-ons for you. But they've seen and they've documented four reasons why they think that coding is important here. First off, uh, many indie developers and hobbyists are using this. And then when they get to the at the, the level that it's not doing stuff for them anymore, they move on to a different game engine. And I get this one. This is uh, Construct 3 in some ways has a very short runway. So if you move beyond the capabilities, if you come into game development as a coder and you're kind of getting in your banging up against the walls of the functionality that Construct 3 provides, this is the point in time where you move on to a Unity or a Godot or like a full programming game engine. And they want to kind of change that. Now, second, is this being used to teach by, apparently Construct is being used in classrooms. Um, they want to have it so that they can teach JavaScript in those classrooms. So there's a win there as well. Um, and you get into professional business users sometimes want to integrate their code in with Construct, and this will give them another opportunity to do so. And finally, people are doing it already anyways, but in a hackish or third-party add-on kind of system. So this is basically taking the third-party hack kind of scenario out of the situation and making it a bit more official. Next up, we get into a category about why they chose JavaScript. And this one, I, I think I can just gloss over. You're a JavaScript-powered game engine, so you chose JavaScript. Makes 100% sense to me. And then they're kind of singing the merit to JavaScript, the popularity of JavaScript, whatever. I think you guys basically already probably have an opinion on JavaScript one way or the other. So I'm just going to gloss over that part right there completely. And then we're getting into a, an area that is very fun and controversial at times, is that writing your own custom language sucks, which is kind of funny because in the world of JavaScript, there's nothing intermediate level developers of JavaScript like more than writing their own templating language or JavaScript extensions or a, it's the rite of passage as JavaScript developers. But I agree, writing your own quasi template language that people have to learn
learn in order to use your programming language is annoying. And one of the number one complaints about Godot that I hear is often GD script. Why did you use GD script? Why wouldn't you just use something that has existing documentation and materials and so on out there? And I've heard things from both sides of that argument. I'm not you know, going back down that road there. But a lot of people do take the attitude that rolling your own custom programming language sucks. Um, and I can I can definitely see the merits with it. So now we're gonna get into the details of how Construct3 is going to support JavaScript. And there's a couple of different ways. The first one is you can straight up just type it as an action. And this one's kind of cool because of exactly what you see here. So you got an action attached to this on start of layout event, and they're just gonna trigger off in a hello world. And this is really handy, actually. If you don't do any alert-based or printf-based debugging in your life, you're a much more disciplined developer than 99% of us because this is just something people do. When you wanna figure out why your code isn't being reached, you throw a quick alert in there. And this will enable that functionality, but you're not gonna write your full-blown game logic this way. It gets hacky really quick, but that hackiness is definitely a nice way to do things. And then you're also going to have script integration. So when you're ready to go farther, you can write a block of JavaScript. This goes in the same place as the entire event. So you're seeing right there. So when that, e that event is basically going to trigger that logging that you saw. Uh, and then probably the way that 90% of people are going to use it is you add it as a script. So here you can see an example of a script being added. And what they've done is they've done callbacks. So you've got run on startup callback. So this will be called when uh, your code initializes. And what they're doing is registering with the runtime object to add an event listener for on tick, which will be your game loop. And then you put your game logic for this um, action or event or script or whatever the heck this actually ends up being here inside of the tick event. And that is how you would program your game. Now, a lot of um, well, a lot of game engines in general do this. You, basically, you register uh, to handle certain events, and then you have logic in the callbacks for those events. And that seems to be the model they are going with. It's pretty straightforward, easy to use, ultimately, when you get down to it. So you can also integrate directly into um, events. So you're seeing here this untouched sprite event is being passed parameters. So you see you can write directly in your code. You can say runtime objects.sprite and then iterate through them all and then you know modify the code there. So you're getting, it's not just code that runs when an event is fired. It actually integrates with those events, has access to the parameters of those events and so on. So it can be used um, just in theory for anything that you would use add-on system for now. Uh, and then this kind of confuses me a little bit here. Their terminology, here is how it's coming. Once they're ready to launch, this is a, an announcement, by the way, not a launch. Um, feature will be sold as a separate add-on for Construct. However, anyone who's ever had a Construct3 subscription of any kind, past or present, will get the add-on for free, for life, at no additional cost. So if you're a past or a current subscriber, this is free. Uh, currently, this will apply to new subscribers, so in the future, subscribers too as well. Um, but there's going to be a cutoff date at some point in time. So I think this is ultimately going to be an add-on in the future. And I think that is a very stupid mistake. If, if you bring in this new way of programming your game engine, and let's say documentation and tutorials start taking it for granted, which they should because this is a pretty fundamental thing, and then you take it away at some point in time, that's just not going to sell. But I am of the attitude that there's no way that that cutoff is going to going to happen in the future. This is pretty core functionality that should have been in the Construct3 game engine all along. Selling it as an add-on, yeah, that's a giant mistake in my humble opinion. So if they ever actually do do that cutoff to try and you know get some money out of this as a system, I think I think that's a mistake. But I'd be interested in hearing what your opinion is there. First off, what's your opinion on all of this? Did you ever try Construct3? Do you have an opinion on it? And did you find that the, the only ability to extend it via add-ons was a bit annoying? The lack of ability to integrate with a scripting language, did you find that that to be as much of a negative as I personally did. Um, I did find that at least this kind of, for a programming perspective, brings it into parity with the likes of Stencil and GDevelop, which both have this functionality. And it was a glaring missing feature, in my humble opinion, of Construct3. So I, I definitely think that this is a positive step forward. I do question a bit if the add-on thing, if this is a bit of a mistake or not. Um, but I, I'm not entirely certain, and I'd love your feedback on that one. So we're looking at an early version of the scripting feature in the next beta release of Construct sometime in the next couple of weeks. If you're already a subscriber, you'll be able to test it as soon as the next beta. Feature will continue to develop and expand over time. We would like to have, uh, we would likely have more news about it in the future. So stay tuned, and we look forward to more combats uh, to to seeing what you can all do with it. And then uh, we've got feedback, and for the most part. 
Uh, we've got some pretty happy feedback for most of the users. Like I said, I think this is definitely one of those things that Construct 3 just straight out needs. I just don't think it's an add-on. I think this is just a core feature that should be just added to the game engine. But I would love to hear your opinions down below. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.